Evan Guest missed a cheating baseball in Utah and hit the panic button on the calls, but you might want to pause that, I guess. Uh, this is Kramer's Baseball World, and we start right now. I'm, I'm not I'm, I'm not sure what's going on with the camera quality or the latency quality of what's been happening. Um, I guess it's crapping out here right now at the worst time possible. But thank you for tuning in and joining me on this nice, lovely Wednesday evening. We've already got a handful of baseball games that have already – subpart or sub finished or even keeping on going right now it seems like the Tampa Bay Rays are going to become 12 no wait they're, yeah they're gonna be 12 and 0 by the end of the day oh my gosh they are it's phenomenal the fact that the Tampa Bay Rays are, just, are, are continuing to pile on runs right now I'm against the Boston Red Sox I was watching that game prior to this so maybe it's me watching the game it's I mean it's six to three Tampa Bay over Boston here in the bottom of the fifth We'll quickly go around the scoreboard um, uh, with what's been happening in Major League Baseball. As right now, it's nothing Nothing seems to load right now. That's that's the perfect time. In order to start an internet YouTube-based show is when everything, when things go to, to work. Here's the thing. Can never count on anything, it seems like. Now, the games that have already happened today, Houston Astros defeated the Pittsburgh Pirates 7 to nothing. The Padres lost to the New York Mets 5-2. The Twinkies, the Twins, beat the, since the Chicago White Sox 3-1. to one. Yankees outlasted the Indians, excuse me, Guardians, three, no, 4-3. to three. Seattle defeated the Chicago Cubs 5-2. to two. The Cardinals defeated the Rockies 7-4. to four. Arizona beat the, wow, they actually beat the, the Brewers. Wow, the Brewers lost. Arizona 7-3. to three. Miami and Philly, the game's over, 3-2. to two. And Washington and Washington, <laughs> <laughs> I thought it said I thought it said Washington defeated the Angels at first. No, that didn't happen. It was a three to two final there. But my goodness, Twitter last night was a little bit wild. It, it, it was it was incredibly wild. So Evan Gaddis, a former Major League Baseball player, played for the Atlanta Braves, has a great story. He was a homeless person being a janitor of a school, ended up trying out for the Atlanta Braves or whatever organization he started off with. I know he debuted with the Atlanta Braves, but Worked his way himself up to be a major league baseball player. The fact that being homeless and being a janitor, and you becoming a baseball player, that's that's quite impressive. That that's 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 a great stature. But last night, and also Evan Gaddis, World Series winner with the Houston Astros. And what I'm about to talk to you about is what Evan Gaddis was replying to tweets last night. Yeah, a I guess a little bit. I mean, this is I'm just saying he might have been boozed up or whatever you want to call it. Maybe a little high high elevation type talking here. But Evan Gaddis, this is per, I'm just going to say per Yankel, Yankee librarian, Joe Randazzo. I used his screenshot for this. I'm going to read this to you what it, what it is. So he replies to a tweet. And the tweet that he replied to his first says, Thanks, Evan. Was lucky to see you play in left field two of the 11 times you did in 2015 with the salute emoji. And Evan Gaddis, per Promptly replies, I can guarantee I was terrified and probably on performance-enhancing drug both times. So he's admitting to PEDs right here. Before you get to the other juicy stuff, he just admitted being on performance-enhancing drugs. Well, okay, I, I, I guess. All right. And by the way, if you hear a cat in the background, that's my cat Moon just going absolutely bonkers over here. Uh, but someone replies to that tweet of him about the PEDs. Put the... Uh, cup emoji with alcohol in it down for a minute. The trash cans, Evan. How many bangs on the trash cans did you hear in the 2017 postseason? And Gaddis replies, depends on the pitch. And then the person replied with the question that sent him that question. It says, was the pitch you hit for a homer in game seven of the ALCS in game seven a trash can bang? Gaddis promptly re replies, yes, I'm pretty sure. Backdoor cutter slider. Are we believing this? Are, are we going to sit back and believe what Evan Gaddis has got to say on Twitter? I mean, if he says it, then I guess he admits to it, I guess. Especially if it's on a tweet form. I mean, it's whatever you post on the internet stays on the internet forever. Even if it was a screenshot of this and I've gone back through um, at Gaddis's Twitter I haven't really found those uh, replies. I went to his, his media replies with him and stuff. But he did tweet out last night at 1041. Uh, at 1041, he said, and it turns out I say stupid stuff 
from time to time. Night. How stupid is it, though? Are you at least uncovering the fact that, yes, Houston Astros did cheat, and B, took performance-enhancing drugs? Like, what's 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 going on? What's going on here? Like, more seriously, what is going on here? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. A good friend of mine, Jay Binkley, just sent me a video of Jared Kelnick today going 482. Oh, my goodness. How, could I not, how did I not see that earlier? Jared Kelnick went 482 at Wrigley. Wow. Okay, then. All right. Hey, thanks, Bankley. Thank you for sending me that just like right now. That's a live reaction to me. Jared Kelnick's a stud, and I hope he can at least pan it out and do what he does best major league level, what he does in the AAA level. So – I, I hope wish nothing for the best. But back to Evan Gaddis. He's cheating. He cheated. He cheated on two different levels, performance enhancing drugs and the being one of the, the people who was a part of the Astros who won the World Series. No, definitely cheated. But yet last night on the Twitter bird app, just lying it all out there. And I I mean, I got to agree with both. I, I'm pretty sure he was – didn't he get suspended? I'm pretty sure. I'm, I'm 95% sure that he got suspended – on PEDs in a season. So at least he's up to that. So if that's that case, then ooh, at least he's uh, admitted to cheating. And like, that's wild. Like, I'm curious if more and more players are actually going to come out here and do this because is this a apply to him not being in the limelight, him not being major league baseball? This is making him since baseball's at like one, I guess I want to say baseball's at, at its highest that it's ever been. And I think it does help with what we see with this pitch clock. But is he like, Kind of like, hey, don't forget about me. Hey, remember. And then he just sends out this tweet replying to people. Are we going to see more of this? I'm curious. I might turn on post notifications on Evan Gaddis just in case. Because then I'm also, whoever was on that team prior, like Tony Kemp, I, I remember when he left, when he left the Astros assign with the, or if it was a trade or a sign, no matter what, when he went to the Angels, not Angels, the Athletics, he had to prove himself. He told his teammates saying, hey, that's not a, that happened. I, I I didn't I didn't stop it. Therefore, he's still held accountable if he didn't try to stop it. But he's like, hey, I was not a part of that. I did not do anything that, that involved me to continue to do that. And I didn't want to assist or help for it. So he I remember him saying that to the athletics teams, and then now he's one of the faces of the Oakland Athletics, which is good for him. Tony Kemp is a great baseball player. And I remember when Mike Friars, you know, the guy mustache that came for his beard all the way around to his, uh, his mustache area, and it was just like a hook. Yeah, that picture for the athletics when he came over there, I mean, he talked about it. And all these guys, like, they're being held accountable. Okay, but I did some digging. I want to make sure I'm fact-checking this right. A.J. Hinch, baseball reference. So little did I know that in 2001 and 2002 – A.J. Hinch and I believe Carlos Beltran was a Kansas City Royal those two days. If you got to think, of, oh, not two days, those two years. I'm, I'm just fact-checking myself right now because I don't want to sound like I'm talking out of my ass. But they were teammates. Wild, A.J. Hinch was the manager of the Astros when they won the World Series. Now, what I'm curious is, that's that 2003 season. Was AJ Hinch a part of the 2003 season? No, he was not. Okay, but is there a mastermind plan that all of this started back in Kansas City days? Did they get like some type of reference? Because I mean, they were former teammates, and we already know what Carlos Beltran was in the role of that entirety of the trash can banging. Did they somehow, when they were both in Kansas City together, try to figure this out back then? And there's a good possibility. And we could possibly think that the entirety of the brainchild of all of the, the, the that tainted Houston Astros World Series victory, that could have started here in Kansas City back in 2001 and 2002. Let that sink in. That mindset for the guys, if you're not cheating, you're not trying, I think that it still is a, a, a mindset that a lot of baseball players still have. Heck, I even have that mindset. I still play – I play baseball, and I try to find any type of given edge against an opponent when I'm out there. And I'll relate to the team. Like, that's just what I do. 
Most players do this as well. I'm not, I know I'm not the only one. And so if you can try to find that exact same thing, so we could have the brainchild of the cheating scandal could have been right placed right here in Kansas City. Let that sink in for you. The Kansas City Royals, known for a and not so many, many, it's not so much good stuff, I guess. They won a World Series back in 2015 and 85. They probably won't make another World Series probably for another, I don't know, 15 more years, 20 more years. With this core and group, you're not seeing it anytime soon. So is the brainchild of the cheating scandal, was that made, implemented here in Kansas City? Now, that's a million-dollar question. We'll never get the answers to it. And I think Gal, the closest one we're going to get to it as well. Like, I mean, we, we already know the answer. They did cheat. Yeah. Heck, we're going to opening day in that second game as well. Carlos Correa got a lot of booze the entire time. And the air I hear, like, F you, cheater, and all that, cheater, cheater, or whatever. Whatever cheating chant they want to go. Heck, I even heard people banging on their chairs and stuff so act like it was a trash can. So people aren't going to forget that. In this lifetime, no. I mean, we had, at some point we got we we found out why the Black Sox scandal was a thing back when the White Sox won. Excuse me. And at some point in our lifetime, we're going to get the hard truth. It may not be right now, but the next 20 to 30 years. They'll do a documentary. Oh, you already know there's a documentary in the works trying to figure out how we found out, probably. That's probably what's titled. You know it's in the works. So I a, <laughs> I just want to know more answers. I just want to know. I just want to know the motive behind it. Clear the motives with Wonder World Series, but I want to hear them say it. I want to hear them say it with their own words. Why? Even and more in depth than what they've already done. Like, can we not just get that? Like at some point, I say it's Carlos Correa. No. Nope. Let's say it. Say it's say it's Mike Fires and Tony Kip. They start a podcast together. One, they're done with uh, baseball. They probably I, I don't even think they even probably talk to each other anymore. But you never know. And they're like maybe 20, 30 years ago. It's like, hey, remember when we were playing for the Astros? Remember when they were like they're banging on trash cans and all that stuff? They're trying to get us to do it. Like, come on. I, I, you know, at that some point that's going to happen. And I'm here for it. I'm ready for it. I don't want to wait 20 or 30 years to figure out more. I'm, I want more details. I, I'm in a content hunger. I guess medium. I don't know. I, I, we always want the next latest content and everything. I, heck, I, we're all guilty of it. But yeah, hey, I, so I saw an ESPN today on a, like the website. I was just checking out MOB. In Salt Lake City, Utah? Could that be a possible destination of a, a baseball team there? And I'm, I'm curious. Like, I, I, ge, ge, geographically, is it feasible? Yes, especially for the um, uh, during the he, summer months. Definitely, I'm not sure when it starts snowing there. You know, it's probably gonna, you know it probably snows in in, in Utah. Maybe I want to say probably October. I feel like it would. I don't see why it wouldn't. It's up there. It's up north. It's a uh, it's northwest from here. But you also got to think they've already wanted two different other teams as possible because MLB is going to expand. But it's the inevitable is going to happen. It will expand. I don't know if it's going to be the next 10 years or so because I don't think there's enough good pitching in Major League Baseball, but we might see a different change of what do we think is good. Do we think a three ERA is going to be the, like the lowest of lows now? Or are we going to, like once we get to the under 250s, like 2.5s, is that going to be the next new normal thing when it comes to adding more people or adding more teams into Major League Baseball? Because there's not enough arms in Major League Baseball to make that even feasible. So... When you hear they can't have an odd number, so there's at least be two teams being. Or I mean, we might just see one move, like say a team moves out of say because we already know Tampa Bay Rays and the Oakland Athletics are trying to Oakland's trying to find and have a new stadium, and we don't even know what's going on in Tampa. The fact that they're going to be probably 12 and 0 by the end of the night, and they are don't even sell out. Like I think this season. The Rays will be like, all right, we are fully invested to see like what this team actually does and like what the, like the front office is. Great, they're not going to win a World Series with what they do. I mean, if they, I want to eat my own words because I haven't seen it happen with them, and I'd like to eat my own words about that because and what they are doing right now, there's no reason why they shouldn't be able to do that and later on in the season. So, Salt Lake City, Utah, a possible location destination. I'm curious. I'm curious. So I have the so the other ones that they started to throw around was Nashville and Portland. Okay, I get the Nashville one. Nashville's close to 
close to like a lot of teams. There's there's enough teams for it to make it a, a good flying distance for it. Portland, you you would have that. It's a thing. There's a a big and I mean big gap between where Seattle is and San Francisco, and that's the that's like the the, the radius. Well, I mean, you also got to take the Oakland Athletic because of the, the Bay Area. So let's go Seattle and say the Athletics. There's that. There's that big chunk of gap right there. Now, if you go to Salt Lake City, Utah, that is going to help. I guess with more traveling, and all you got to think too. That's that's good for people for Denver, not for the Rockies, and yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it's a good spot for it. I don't know if Salt Lake City, but I do like the fact that they're like, you know what. With how good the Utah Jazz is and how what they've been able to do, why why does why don't we get a baseball team? I love that for them. The thing is, I don't want them to be like, hey, let's get a team, and it's a team that moves because I can easily see someone's moving to Vegas. Someone is absolutely one baseball team will move to Vegas. That is a given. Now, whether if it is the Oakland Athletics or the, I don't know if Tampa Bay, the Tampa Bay Rays, do they end up moving? I mean, I don't know if they would do that because they'll have to do a conference realignment. And at that point, we're already playing each team ever once every single season. So I can see them going away with the – just having just a traditional – you have the National League and you have the American League. Or you can just put it into three. like Kind of like how the uh, – we can um, – how – what I think the hockey should do, have it all sectioned off where everything is. So, like, maybe Kansas City is that divider, that entire – the. That Missouri structure all the way down through Texas probably should be a section, I guess. I don't know. But I'm just more worried about now thinking about it since the Kansas City Royals are trying to get a new baseball stadium downtown and not many people here in Kansas City are appreciating of that. I just don't want to see a Major League Baseball team move out of the city that I currently live in. I may not be a Kansas City Royals fan. I, granted, I'm a St. Louis Cardinals fan. You can tell with this, uh, with the St. Louis Cardinals championship uh, banner thing that I have back here. I don't want to see a baseball team leave. I will go watch Royals games, hands down, because it's baseball. And, I, I mean, I don't think there's a rivalry between the St. Louis Cardinals and the Kansas City Royals. I don't think there's, there was maybe back in the 80s, but there hasn't been one in a quite some time. It would have been sweet if we saw a like Cardinals and Royals um, uh, baseball um, a World Series back in 2015, but the Cardinals didn't hold up their end of the bargain. I don't – say Nashville – not Nashville. Say Las Vegas does get one, and it's probably athletics. So that means they're going to add two teams. And there's only going to be one team moving, and I hope it's not the Royals. I really hope it's not. I, I think that Vegas connection with the athletics, I mean, heck, Raiders left to go to um, Las Vegas, and a baseball team needs to be in Las Vegas. It's, it's, just, it's, just, it's, it's, it's a great business decision, so why not do it? Salt Lake City, Utah, it's, I, uh, I, th- I find that as a basketball city. I, I do. I do. It is a basketball city. It's not a baseball city. It's not. Yeah. No, I, I, do you guys think that it should, by the way, if you are watching, listening or however you're doing it, thank you. Hit that thumbs up button. I really likely appreciate it. And also if you didn't give me kindly hit that subscribe button, but Salt Lake city, I, I, I want to see more teams. I'd love to have more teams, but it's just there's not enough talent in Major League Baseball to have more teams, and that's what sucks. That is what sucks. All right, let's go around the MLB with the latest stuff going around. That Jared Kelnick shot. Oh, my man, that is 482. That is just wild. All right, yeah, Jordan Walker. 12-game history. Congratulations, young buck. You are tw- 20 years old, 21 years old, and you're out there. You passed. You, you've already got your name next to Ted Williams, which that is pretty damn cool. And now you're pretty much destroying the record. That is, it's, 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 <laughs> it's impressive. And right now, the Cardinals aren't a fast track to winning the uh, having a win, the rookie of the year, because of what Jordan Walker's doing right now, the first week of the season. So Jordan, keep it up. Absolutely love it. Um, I saw something today that Edwin Diaz is eyeing a return this season. All right, okay. It's, I hope he comes back fully healthy. I don't know if he, I don't know if you should try it or push it, but if you can somehow get back, because I mean, we we see what's happening with the with the New York Mets. It is not falling apart, but it's just not healthy. You don't want to rush anything back after tearing something that major. And you should just, I, I would say, just 
chalk this season for a loss. It's okay. We want you to be back fully 100% because you can never know. You might rush it. You get back there and you think you have it, everything going on, everything good, and then you push off or you land or plant something wrong, and then everything just doesn't feel right, and it gets mentally. You don't want that to happen either. And you may you may just be 100 You might be 100%, but up here you're not. Once you're up here mentally 100% from whatever injury you had, you're going to be good. So make sure this is 100% as well. I don't want I don't want Edwin Diaz rush back. I, I really don't. But he's also very good, and the Mets do need him, especially closing it out late in the game as the cat just jumped up here. This is a window, by the way, if you see this moving. It's my other window open. It is hot in this room. You can see the ceiling fan on the background as well. But uh, enough of that. So earlier this week, the, the Royals and Rangers are playing. They're, they play their final game today and up to tonight. They're, they're playing tonight. And But we got to see maybe a two-way player for the Kansas City Royals. Do we think we can see Nate Eaton be a pitcher here at Major League Baseball? This guy has a lot of run on whatever pitch he was trying to throw. He threw a pitch that went to 94 and almost 95 miles per hour, and that's the fastest pitch from position and player. And only three positions players have actually thrown it harder since 2008. And one of them is Christian Betancourt. The other one's Brett Eibner and Drew Patera. The funny fact is on this one, Drew Patera and Brett Eibner, both Royals when they did that. So it was kind of cool. Uh, but uh, yeah, Brett, uh, not Brett, but uh, Nate Eaton's sinker that he has with a ton of tail at 16 inches of, no, 16, uh, 16 run, 16 inches of run. That's him throwing it right here. And I'm in it right here. Like, oh, he wants this spot, but when he throws it as hard as he can, it goes right here. Yeah, can we at least test it out? Like, he's a second baseman for the Royals. Can we test it out, him playing or pitching in Major League Baseball, if he can have this type of run on a sinker and go up to 95 miles per hour on a fastball? I mean, with the average fastball right this year, top of my head, not even looking at, like, anything. It's just me guesstimating. Is it probably, like, 98 or 99? I feel like that would be the average fastball in Major League Baseball at this point. Him being at 95 – the, the, the Royals need a bullpen guy. Boom, there's your guy. Especially, and you can even you can even have him listed there as a uh, um, as a pitcher, I guess, as well. Whenever you typically need him, like, hey, we, we're not going to play you like batting wise, but we can put you in the bullpen if we need you. That's basically what they do with Shohei Otani and the Angels. Well, they don't. They don't. Shohei doesn't come out of the bullpen. Thank God he doesn't. Absolutely, thank God he doesn't. But uh, yeah, Nate, Nate Eaton, two way player for the Kansas City Royals. The funny thing is. There was, was a lot that just happened with the Rangers and Rose, that Nate thing right there. But earlier this week, Andrew Haney had nine consecutive strikeouts. Nine consecutive strikeouts against the Royals? I mean, I'm not shocked by the team, but the fact you can get nine consecutive strikeouts is in a row. That's it's a lot. He uh, passed Nolan Ryan, who had seven consecutive strikeouts that dated back on July 7th, 1991, against the California Angels. There was a um, a relief pitcher that did it, but it was I, I'm I'm not I, I'm counting it, but since it's not a consecutive game, I'm saying Nolan Ryan's thing. But yeah, Andrew Haney, ninth strikeouts. Jordan Walker I already said it passed Ted Williams nine game hit streak. Jordan Walker, the only good bright spot right now for the St. Louis Cardinals. That's just in my opinion. That's just my opinion. Have you seen Baltimore Orioles home run celebration? Like, have you just like sit back and like what one? Have you watched a Baltimore Orioles game? If you haven't, you probably should. Two, if you haven't seen it on the social medias, you probably should go look out and search for it. But it's literally them with a hose, a black and orange hose. It's like candy caned all the way up. And they have a funnel up top. They pour either water, Gatorade, you name it. They pour it down there. So they act like it's like a beer bomb. I think it's a fantastic celebration. More and more celebrations are being great. More and more celebrations are being shown out to us. Like we know this the samurai helmet. The I ooh, what's the Cardinals? I know the Cardinals when they threw water in their face, like threw it right at the ending. The, the high fives down and then the, the, the pushing the cart for the Boston Red Sox. They get in the cart and they push it. They are the the home run jacket the Rays used to have. Like I absolutely love it when someone like it's a celebration. Let's get it. Let's act. We're acting professional at a fun manner, rate right and level. And now we have to cool it off. With a cold one, what? <laughs> That's the thing. I don't know why I'm an idiot. Uh, but yeah, um, uh, and, and and worst news around Major League Baseball: O'Neill Cruz is going to be out for a, a lengthy amount of time. He fractures fibula. He uh, he's uh, got a surgery done. 
But this slide the plate sparked a benches clearing brawl, which uh, first one of the year wasn't a brawl. It was more of a shoving match. But man, it sucks not having O'Neill Cruz out there. It's like I thought we were going to get a great season from him. But not a full healthy one this year, but we'll hopefully we can get a full healthy one next year. So I hope for a speedy recovery for you, O'Neill Cruz. All right, now let's get to what I uh, – I'm frustrated. Frustrated on not like not not a lot of levels, but there's there's kind of a few. The St. Louis Cardinals. What the hell is going on with you guys? I think you're now 500 from this win today, so you're able to shrug off a little bit of this slow start. But my goodness the fact that they like you got handed by the brewers to you over this past weekend and it was just like it, it showed it showed a lot cardinals are five and seven right now they are fourth in the division they're ahead of the cincinnati reds behind the cubs and the pirates are at number two the brewers are at one that should not be like this at all it should be either brewers cardinals cardinals brewers for one and two that's how it should be at this point we got a hot start for the Pittsburgh Pirates. That's not going to last. We already know the Reds are, are terrible. They're four and six. They're going to stay under 500 for the rest of the year. Chicago Cubs, I'm not even going to talk about the Cubs. Don't even want, don't even want to talk about it. The fact that I, the, I love the fact that Jared Kelnick hit that 482 foot bomb against the Chicago Cubs, but at five and seven, that is, it's unacceptable. It's like unacceptable on so many levels because of how good this team is and how good this team is actually batting right now. The Hitting is so far out in front of our pitching right now, like how like production-wise, it's absolutely wild. We're usually used to seeing the pitchers start off the strongest, but it's the reverse opposite. I don't know if it's the pitch clock getting in the, the, the mindset of the pitchers, but the hitting is absolutely fantastic. You have Nolan Gorman at another home run, has four on the year now. Three, he has a 313 average. Nolan Aronado, a 327 average. Tyler O'Neill, a 282. Jordan Walker batting a 319. Alec Burleson, 300. 364 for Paul Goldschmidt. Juan Yepes, when he plays, he's a 333 hitter. Dylan Carlson's batting 300. A lot of guys are batting 300 over. Yikes to Wilson Contreras' 1.79 uh, batting average, but we're seeing a lot of successful hits from the St. Louis Cardinals. Not manufacturing the runs that we've seen. That first tire, that first series that they played this year, we saw that with them. But they're still hitting the ball, and we already know if the ball finds holes and you continue to hit, it's going to find those holes, and you're going to end up putting runs up on the, on the scoreboard, kind of like we saw the last two days and out in Colorado where the Cardinals won on – what was it? Yesterday was – actually, it was Tuesday. They won today already. So we're seeing good things from the hitting. But this pitching, the ERA is so inflated right now, I don't trust anyone towing the rubber. Miles Michaelis, one of our starters, has started three games. It's a 10.05 ERA. 16 earned runs on the season. Let's go to Steven Matz, who has an 8.18 ERA, who has 10 earned runs on the season. That's Jake Walford, Woodford. Nine ERA, 13, nine given up, nine given up. It's weird to Andrew Perlante. He's got his ERA down to a 7.11. That's like like how I said a 7-Eleven. He got it down to that. It's 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 ridiculous. Uh, it's weird too because even where's uh where's Jordan Hicks? I know he has a, Jordan Hicks is a 10 8 ERA. He has five innings of pitch. He's played he's pitched five games. Okay, that's the thing too. If you have a 10 ERA or 7-Eleven ERA, I think they should earn their spot back. In the pitching rotation, the order, and this is all on Ali Marvel. I think it is 100% on Ali Marvel not knowing when to pull guys, or not knowing when to not bring in, said a Jordan Hicks or say Andre Palante, like bringing Chris Stratton, bringing Gian- Giannis Cabrera, who they just called up. Like, like just continue to use those guys. Like in Cabrera yesterday, saw I pitched, I saw him pitch last night, fantastic. Like I absolutely love Cabrera. And it sucks. I think that Pecky Naughton got put on the IL. That's what's terrible about this. And he was our only good one going on. I mean, Zach Thompson's doing good as well with five games and no ERA. But Tina throws Thompson. Don't throw Jordan Hicks. Don't throw Palante. Just 
be manageable with it. But I, that's the thing too. It's also the, the scary part is the two guys who have the worst ERA in our pitching rotation, Miles Michaelis and Steve Metz. Those are the only two guys in our starting pitching rotation who's under contract for next year. Let that sink in for you. The biggest problem, the biggest need that St. Louis Cardinals have, one, they didn't fulfill in at all. In free, they did not go out there and get a starting pitcher, which they should have done. And the pitching is the problem right now. The relief pitching is bad, but the starting pitching is the problem. And uh, we see Jack Flaherty trying to work everything out. Like his walks are extremely up. His ERA is really down, but his walks extremely up. That's not enough. I, it sucks with Adam Wayne running on the IL. It, that's like I know it's they're not healthy. Once they get healthy, they're going to be in a full swing of motion. But it's just downright bad, and they are playing like a terrible baseball team on the pitching side. Like I said, the the, the hitting side is absolutely fantastic, and they're I hope they can keep it up this entire time. The fact that Jordan, I'll say it for the third time now. I think it was the third or fourth time. I'll say it once. Jordan Walker, twelve game hit streak. 13 game hit. Is it 12 or 13? I mean, at five plus seven, Kramer, it's 12. Every single game Jordan Walker's been in, got a hit. It means in the games that Jordan Walker gets hits in, they've won five games. The games that they don't get hits in, or he does get hits in, they're, 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 they've lost seven. So, give or take what you thought. But it's just the time to hit the panic button. I know I'm overreacting. Absolutely no, I'm 100% overreacting in all this. But I. If this continues like this for the next month and a half, there's there's something that we need to discuss here. There's there's arguably something that we definitely need to discuss. Because five and seven right now ain't cutting it if you're the St. Louis Cardinals. All right, let's see what's going on around baseball right now. Hopefully you're all enjoying your night, by the way. Like the video if you could. Hit that subscribe button. But the fact that Miles Michael has three games, that's 16 earned runs on 29 hits. He's given up 29 hits. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. It's like it's, it's, it's what I want to see when I, I turn on the game. I want to see Cardinals starting pitching get destroyed. By the way, the Boston Red Sox are down, and they have two on with one out the top of the seventh. The Tampa Bay Rays are looking to go 13-0. and 0. Looks like the Royals are up 3-1 to one on the Rangers. Uh, the, it's tied in the Braves and Reds at three. It's tied for Toronto and Detroit at one. And Oakland's up on the Baltimore Orioles 4-2. to two. All right, so we're seeing a lot of quick games. Like, are, are you are you cool with that? Are you cool with the quick games going on right now? Because I'm cool with it. I mean, it's just like we're getting games that are just a little bit over two hours. We're going to start to see this shrink a lot more. We definitely will. I mean, heck, we just had a game last week go an hour and 57 minutes between the uh, Mets and Mets and Marlins. Daniel Contra's pitching. Called that. I called St. Alcantara pitching the first ever under two hour game. Let's go. That's the only thing I've called this entire season. I probably should have put money on it. Didn't. That's that's on me. 100% on me. I'll, I'll wear that under my back. I'll wear it. But they're starting to extend beer sales now past the seventh inning, like Milwaukee Brewers are. But wasn't it just this past weekend during the Brewers and Cardinals series where some fan was just urinating on the concourse? Like just. Everything hanging out, just doing his business right there on the concourse. People are walking around. People are filming him. People are being hauled. People are laughing at him. People are like, dude, move or dude, stop. This dude's piss drunk. And yet you want to extend beer sales past the seventh inning. Much respect to that decision up in Milwaukee. Like, seriously, much respect to it. I, were gonna say this. I, think, I think the Royals are already doing it. Um, I mean, if not, I'll find out. I... I plan on going to the Orioles and Royals game, which I want to see Adley Rutschman play. That's the only reason why I want to, I want to go to that to see Adley Rutschman play and Gunnar Henderson. It'd be pretty sweet too for Grayson Rodriguez is toe in the rubber when it happens. But I'll hey I'll find out though. I'll find out if they are doing beer sales. I'll go out on assignment to do that and I'll report back for you if they're doing beer sales in the eighth inning still. But I think we're going to see a lot more teams do this and, and move over to it. What are you doing man? What you, no, that's that's my that's my leftover food, but you can't you can't have that. No, stop. Moon. Hello everyone. This is my cat Moon. He's uh are you gonna let go of my shirt, bud? Let go of my shirt. Here's Moon. Yep, he's the one that's uh, hitting stuff around. Yep, this is my this is my guy, it's my number one. He's my assistant at times. All right, you can go ahead. 
All right. I'm going. Hey, by the way, Cardinals won today. He's a Cardinals fan. Big Cardinals fan. Huge Cardinals fan. Not a big beer drinker, though. No, I've never given it to him. Never will. I don't know why you would want to give Cat a beer anyways. Like, I, it's, I think it would just go to waste. But a lot of games are going quick. I think more and more teams are going to do this. And I, I'm, I'm curious. Are they also going to extend the hours of are the innings to which you can buy food too as well? Like I know at times people are closing up in the seventh, eighth inning as well when it comes to food. And are they going to go up until the ninth inning? They're going to go up until extras. Are they going to be up until the game closes? Because I ain't gonna lie, ballpark food here at Kaufman here in Kansas City is great because there's no other food surrounding it unless you want to go to the Taco Bell. That's why I'm so cannot wait when they move downtown. I hope. Hopefully they move downtown and they don't move elsewhere. We'll put it to the ship too. Hopefully you liked it. Hopefully you enjoyed Kramer's Baseball World because I enjoy doing these. I love baseball. I'm going to talk about baseball constantly, no matter if it's at the water cooler at work or with you all sitting here watching it whenever if it's live or recorded. But I appreciate you all. Have a good one. Put that smile on your face. Just do it. It's a smiling is free, and I love giving it to people. Have a good one.